25% of Hawaii is hereby declared to belong to the guys who overthrew the country. I hereby declare all of the houses you own in right now to be Donovan's property. Can I please have your car keys and your house keys on the way out? I hereby declare your private property to be mine. That's what they did. By declaration, nothing more. And they shift some language. Instead of it being the private lands, they said, oh, well, it's public lands. Right? And this use of the justice system and the legal system is how 25% of Hawaii is transmuted from private property to public property. Right? Is hereby declared. Nothing more than a declaration. I declare 25% of Hawaii to belong to me. That's how the crown lands are taken. Right? And they shift language and they shift words. And this is the power of words. In language, there is life. In language, there is death. Right? Start calling what is private public. Start calling what is this, that. And all of a sudden, we're confused. And, and now they got 25% of Hawaii. Yep. What, what they did later in 1895, they confiscate the crown lands, combine them with the government lands, rename them the public lands. Right? So now we take the potatoes and we take the carrots and we throw them in one, one pot of stew and we mix them all up. And we hope people get confused in what is what and aren't able to separate the carrots out from the potatoes anymore and just it's all public lands. Right. Then in 1898, they're ceded to the United States. In 1959, the United States cedes the public lands back to the state of Hawaii in trust, one of five beneficiaries for the betterment of the condition of Native Hawaiians, one out of five. 20%, 20%, OHA, 1978 Constitutional Convention to administer the 20%. That's the genealogy of ceded lands, right? Which is only ceded if there's a treaty, no treaty, not ceded, seized to take something by force, not ceded. Previous to this, did they call them crown lands? Yes. After 1865, they were renamed from the king's lands to crown lands. So between 1865 and 1893, 94, 95, they're called crown lands. And that's that designation of inheritable, after the 64 court case, inheritable by the crown and also made inalienable in 1865 by the legislature. All right? I just saw an article post, popped across my, my browser today. New Zealand just made it illegal for foreigners to purchase land. That did not make public property private property and private property public property. Right? 1865 was a limitation on you cannot sell the crown lands. That didn't transfer private property to public property. In the same way, today, New Zealand didn't transfer all of its lands from public to private by making it unpurchasable by foreigners. Right? Limiting a stick does not shift from public to private. It makes a stick smaller. Right? 1840, prerogatives of the king. He shall retain his own private lands, and the lands forfeited for the non-payment of taxes shall revert to him. 1852, Article 41, the king's private lands and other property are inviolable. 1864, the, Article 39, the king's private lands and other property are inviolable. 
Hawaiian Constitution, King's Lands Protected. Hawaiian Constitution, King's Lands Protected. Hawaiian Constitution, King's Lands Protected. 1887 Bayonet Constitution, not by Hawaiians, by insurgents. What do you think happens to this clause? It is the only clause that is removed from the 1864 Constitution. They edit and change other clauses, but they do not remove in its entirety other clauses. Article 39 is the only clause that's removed, right? This is the pay attention to how they use the justice and legal system. When you are no longer in control of your country and your laws, this is what happens, right? 1887, that's removed. In 1894, through Article 95, that which was inviolable is now declared to be public property. How does something that was inviolable now transmute into public property? Right? This is the significance of the loss of government on Hawaii. This is the significance of how our legal system protected us before the overthrow, then was used against us after the overthrow. The reality we are fighting today is because of that loss of governance. Right? It's not because of the Mahale. It's not because we transitioned to private property that we lost all of our land. It's because we lost governance and then they made these kinds of laws and started taking stuff. Right? <clears throat> this Hawaiian land's not stolen, um, or the West Hawaii Today article, Hawaiian land's not stolen, tried to paint a picture and say, well, we bought all these lands. We didn't steal them. Right? They were stolen. To be proper, you cannot steal immovable property. Okay? There is no such thing as stealing land. Right? By definition, real property, immovable, personal property, movable. I can steal, I can steal, I can steal anything I can pick up and carry. I cannot put the dirt in my pocket, the land is still there. Right? You cannot steal, by definition, immovable property. Yet, we all know, one, there's, to my knowledge, one person in the entire United States who was convicted of theft of land. One person in the entirety of the United States has been convicted in the, because it doesn't exist. You can't steal by definition immovable property. You cannot move the immovable, right? That person in Hawaii today, we all know who that is. Well, that's how you make charges to character assassinate someone so that you can claim in 2019, well, he's a felon, so don't, to discredit him, All right? And that's the narrative that's going on because I don't want to deal with the content. I don't want to deal with the fact that there's no treaty. I don't want to explain to you how a joint resolution annexes a country in international law. Let's just call him a felon and get his people to discredit him that way, right? We have to get wise to the tactics, right? Importance of language, importance of narrative, how people try to control the narrative. And don't deal with the content, right? <clears throat> In 1910, Liliu takes this to the US Supreme Court, right? In kind of a last ditch effort to uh, try and get access to these lands. Judge Fenton Booth, 1910. Although, although the 1864 Hawaiian Kingdom Court sustained the right of dower in the widow of the king, it is clear from the opinion in 1864 that the crown lands are treated as public or private property. What did the 1864 court case say? Private, right? It is clear... Under the act, this is the 64. Under the act, the lands, defend, lands descend in fee, the inheritance being limited, however, to the successors to the throne as private property. Right? It is clear by the 1864 that it is as private property. Although the court sustained the right of dower, it is clear from the opinion that the crown lands are treated not as the king's private property, in the strict sense of the word, but they belong to the office and not to the individual. 
Do you see all the creative use of language here? Right? Not as the king's private property in the strict sense of the word. Right? What you have to understand here is this judge is in a situation where he has to make a violation of Amendment 5, Article 5 of the United States Constitution legal. Right? United States Constitution, Fifth Amendment. No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall private property be taken for public use without compensation. In 1894, private property was taken for public use, treated as government lands, without compensation. You have just violated the most sacred of American you just confiscated private property. If America did this today to 25% of America, there would be revolution. The militias would be out, right? All of the NRA over my cold, dead hands are you taking my private property. Yet that is exactly what was done in 1894 to the king's lands, to the crown lands. Private property was taken, treated as public property, without compensation against the United States Constitution. So we have to come up with creative language. Well, it wasn't the king's private property in the strict sense of the word. How else do you justify the taking of private property to make it public? I, would, I don't know what I would have said if I was this judge to justify what was done. It's illegal. Right? And this is where all of this is, this is, this is no sovereignty issue. This is, has nothing to do with a lack of treaty, has nothing to do with sovereignty, any of those issues. This is a land title issue. I will pretend for a second we're in America. You violated the Fifth Amendment. No way around it. Let's try this in an American court. You violated the Fifth Amendment. Right? <clears throat> 25 years later, we have Judge Samuel P. King write an editorial on the December 23rd, 1994 Star Bulletin. History of the Crown Lands may determine their future. You think? <laughs> right? He's writing this in 1994. Right? And he's a judge, right? So he has to be careful with his language. And I'm a historian, so I can say the state doesn't own it. He's a judge. He can't say those kinds of things, right? What does he say? In 1893, after the revolution, the crown lands were lumped in with the government lands, which together became the public lands of the provisional government and republic. Thus, what Kamehameha III had set aside for me and my heirs and successors forever as my, private, as my property exclusively was transmuted into part of the general land holdings of the government of Hawaii. I will translate for you. Transmuted means they were stolen. Right? A sitting judge cannot sit there and say that outright that these lands were stolen, but when he says these lands were transmuted what he's saying is, guys, we don't own them. They're going to get hip to this someday. Maybe you should settle sooner than later. In the course of rewriting history and correcting past wrongs, as a start, it would not be unjust for the state of Hawaii to transfer whatever is left of the crown lands one half to the trustees of Kamehameha Schools, one half to uh, Queen's Hospital. And he's going, he, in his judgment, 1864, Judge Roberson was wrong and should have gave it to, to uh, Keiko Anaua which was then went to Kamehameha Schools. That's why he's saying today it should go to Kamehameha Schools and uh, Queen's Hospital, Queen Emma, right? 
So you, you have to ask, why would a judge in 1994 say you should give whatever is left, right? In the course of rewriting history and correcting past wrongs, as a start, it would not be unjust for the state to transfer whatever is left of the crown lands out of its hands.